Hey guys, I'm back with another video. So if you haven't checked out my previous video, it's my pretty big uh, semi-annual sale haul uh, where I got found a lot of 75% off goodies and like hidden gems uh, that I was pretty excited about. So make sure you watch that. And after you watch that, then here's this video, which uh, me and a friend met up to go to Atlanta uh, to find the uh, elusive uh, test candles of the Pepper Plum Collection and the Crisp Linen Breeze Collection. Uh, so we uh, hit up all the Atlanta stores, not only for semi-annual sale, but for the test candles as well. And so this is the haul for all those candles uh, that we were able to find. Also, shout out to Sexy Sash Love Songs, um, as well as Candles and Corks. Uh, we met, met them on our trip as well, so it was super fun finding and just like talking to other Candle community members who like knew the lingo and like you know just the Kindle community in general uh, so super fun to meet up with you guys so thank you guys uh, so much it was a lot of fun uh, talking to you guys and chatting with you uh, so there was that as well so overall a really fun trip we were there for quite a while hitting up all the test stores so if you don't know uh, the Atlanta region mainly like a big northern uh, quadrant of stores in the area are test stores uh, for Bath and Body Works and a test store is basically a store that gets product early to test and do a read and react ahead of time uh, before they make the uh, call to make the uh, products or that collection to go wide nationwide to all stores and so in this event uh, there were like these kind of like unisex uh, men's type fragrances that have been testing and that we've known about since like February or something like that for many many months and we just kind of assumed that they were going to come out into all stores because they all had like product images and everything uh, but then they just never showed up and we figured these were supposed to be for Father's Day because a lot of them are like these sort of like unisex masculine leaning fragrances is. Uh, but Father's Day is right around the corner. Semi-annual sales happening. There was absolutely no news of this that we're like, this is probably our last chance to be able to snag these candles. We were thinking maybe that these candles would go like 75% off or clearance out during semi-annual sale, but that, that did not happen. Uh, that might still be the case later on and maybe after Father's Day is done and they can like milk their last like, you know, uh, higher price on these candles. But they were they actually did not go on sale for semi-annual sale. So we had like a contingency plan to actually uh, get there Friday before the Saturday of semi-annual sale um, and get there like within like the last like two hours of closing to be able to uh, obtain these candles uh, in the event that they were either pulled in the back or they would return to full price during SAS which is what exactly happened with these candles. These are back to full price now at the test stores and they are not part of the semi-annual sale so we were able to at least score them with the $10 off promo of these coupons which make them $16.50 um, and then use a coupon on top of that and that's how we're able to obtain these candles. So they're not actually clearancing during semi annual sales so the fate of these collections are still uh, yet to be known but uh, with many of the sales associates and uh, managers that we talk to uh, this collection is not doing very well at all so I can't imagine this would go wide if they're not even doing good at all in the test stores uh, there was just a huge abundance of all these candles I thought like uh, we were kind of like you know freaking out that maybe these would like be sold out or like not be able to find but like they were like so so in abundance at like all the test stores in the region that there was really no reason to panic because like they were everywhere like there was a ton of them at pretty much every store on the walls. There was only one store that pulled one collection because they just had so many sale candles that they had to replace it with, but all the other stores had them in abundance everywhere, like out on the floor, just at full price during semi annual sale. So, if you are in the test region or are able to travel to Atlanta, these candles still do exist. They're still like out on the walls, uh, except they're just not on sale right now. So you might want to have to wait until uh, they actually become on sale. Uh, I think there's also a men's shop testing in. Canton, Ohio, and Burridge, Illinois are these other two random like men's test stores that are like a new men's shop concept. It's kind of like, you know how there's a room for a white barn and there's a room for BBW. Uh, there's also like a room for a men's store now, and that's like a new men's concept store that are also testing these candles as well. So if you do uh, live near those regions, these candles exist as well. I kind of like nitty gritty info on these uh, collections, but just kind of like so much like intrigue um, and mystery around these because they've just been out for a while, but they didn't go wide. But then there's also these men's stores as well, assuming they're for Father's Day, but they didn't go wide. So kind of irrelevant to the majority out there because you probably can't get your hands on them. But once again, if you're in those aforementioned regions, you might be able to find them. And just as like a, you know, candle reviewing channel, I still really want to get my hands on them and see what they smell like. Uh, you know, is it a repackage? Is it new? All that stuff. If you're interested, then it starts right now. 
So we have the Peppered Plum Collection, which is in like this uh, like geometric uh, wraparound label. As you can see right here, that's what that looks like. Uh, there are six in this collection, but only five have been produced. There was a sixth one supposed to be called Vintage Champagne that didn't, didn't actually go to production. Uh, so you can't get those, but the other five do exist. Uh, this is Bold Plum, Warm Patchouli, and Black Peppercorn. As you remember, uh, Peppered Plum was a fragrance uh, many years back that came in like a deep plum colored white barn core jar that I actually own myself. I would do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I'm actually in a move right now that the, all those other candles are in a different house right now, packed up, that I cannot get to it right now, unfortunately. Uh, but we do have this, and then it came out in a single wake as well, and those were the only two times that Pepper Plum has come out. So then when we saw this, there's a bit of a cult following for this candle uh, that uh, people were really hyped for it and wanted it to come out. But once again, I think it's only in test stores right now. Uh, I believe the old one had like a saffron spice note in it, but this one has Bull Plum, Warm Patchouli, and Black peppercorn, uh, white wax with the thick rope-like wigs. This is actually a little bit different, believe it or not, from the old version. And the old version had a more juicy, sweet, awesome, like berry plum juiciness to it. There still was a little bit of spice in there, but I feel like it was a little bit more juicy and sweet. Whereas this one's much heavier on a woodsy, uh, like dark patchouli, like damp, earthy note. Uh, it's definitely stronger in there. That's a little bit more like woodsy, more patchouli forward, and a little bit more smoky. And then comes that juicy sort of like plum action after it that it's kind of actually a little bit of a tweak on the original one that I don't think is the same fragrance. Uh, me and the friend were both smelling it in the store. And the moment we smelled it, we were just like, whoa, this like kind of isn't what we like remember pepper plum to be. Uh, and so we're a little bit disappointed there. It's like, I don't know, 80 80% the same as the old one, but the patchouli just seems so much stronger. I don't know if they don't have the old fragrance oils from the original release, if this was an intentional uh, change or what the issue is, but there's a heavier patchouli woodsy note. Obviously, I haven't burned this yet, so I don't know, uh, but it is actually a little bit different from the original peppered plum. Close enough, but not the same. So that's what this is. It's a juicy... It's like a more, it's a higher end sophisticated uh, juicy plum plus a woodsy patchouli fragrance is mixed in there as well. The closest thing I can compare this to is Wine Cellar, uh, like very much sibling fragrances to Wine Cellar, which is also very similar to uh, Vanilla Birch that's out right now. So if you enjoy Vanilla Birch or Wine Cellar, this is actually very much in a similar fragrance family that you might want to check this out, but a little bit different from the original version, uh, believe it or not. So that's Peppered Plum uh, right there, and that's what that looks like. Uh, the next one we have is Dark Velvet Oud, and that's what that looks like right there. Uh, this is Dried Raspberries, White Musk, and Oud, uh, and I've actually burned this one once already, and that's what that looks like. Oh my god, this one's delicious. So this one was actually, there was an international uh, White Barn Core uh, product image of this that leaked way early on, but it never actually uh, made it to the States or North America, that we never saw it, but there was an international like White Barn Core, like a red jar label uh, that existed. Uh, and then we have it here in this collection, and... I think a lot of the reports were saying it was similar to like a more masculine into the night, which I can definitely see the similarities there. Uh, but it's actually a lot more perfumey and feminine than I thought it would be, uh, at least uh, in comparison to the initial reports of saying it was a masculine into the night. But definitely get the into the night comparison. It's that like uh, sort of velvety, uh, almost like a slightly smoky rose note is in there is, uh, for sure. Uh, it's like a smoky raspberry rose is what this smells like, which is very similar to into the night. But into the night was a little bit more uh, heavy. I think that it also had a patchouli note in it that was a little bit more woodsy. This one's a little bit more powdery, soft, and feminine that I really enjoy. Uh, it's very much like your high-end rose fragrance from this that I love so much. That's why I actually got two of them right off the bat because I loved it so much. Uh, this is definitely way more like feminine uh, perfume leaning than I thought would be in a collection like this. Uh, definitely get a juicy, awesome rose mixed with a slight like smoky powderiness. Uh, combined with a sweet, juicy raspberry on the bottom. It's not as sweet as Rosewater Meringue, but think of like Rosewater Meringue as being like the candy daytime version. And then Dark Velvet Oud being more like the vibey, sultry, like late night version of Rosewater Meringue. So similar like raspberry rose note, but this one's a lot more like heavy, uh, sultry, and mature than Rosewater Meringue is. And that's what I love so much about it. Uh, kind of reminds me of that like, uh, if you smell Rose Noir and Oud from Nest, very much in that type of fragrance family. Uh, that, that like a little bit of a smokiness mixed with an awesome, 
like luxury rose fragrance. Uh, simply excellent. I really enjoyed it. Uh, a kind of weird like concept and just naming on this because it's such like a feminine rose uh, perfume fragrance. Uh, but it's called Dark Velvet Oud. Uh, but yeah, of course it has that like Oud note, woodsy, like smoky note. That's why we're getting that sort of like like woodsy feel in here as well. Uh, but love it. It was super strong in the hotel room. Uh, we were both like just totally choked out by the fragrance. Uh, we loved it. Well, at least I loved every minute of it. So that was Dark Velvet Oud right there. Uh, the next one we have is Vanilla and Oakwood, and that's what that looks like right here. Uh, this one is Madagascar Vanilla Rich Oakwood and Hints of Lavender. I was kind of excited for this one just because I love my, like, vanilla woodsy fragrances. Like, I love smoked vanilla, winter white woods, yuletide, all that. Give it to me. Uh, and then, so we do have that right here. And upon smelling this in the store, I was like, girl, this is totally a repackage or like a repackage of a twist of something I've smelled before and it hit me. This just smells pretty much just like vanilla sage. Uh, they came out in that like wraparound like green wall wall. Uh, paper label uh, as well as I think there was a panel the glass a green version of it as well And then there was also a matte green white barn jar of vanilla sage as well uh, This is pretty much vanilla sage um, like at least 90% the same. Once again, my vanilla sage is packed up in the other house so I can't get to it right now, but off of scent memory uh, a very, uh, like, nice, sweet, uh, light vanilla presence in there, mixed with, like, a herbal, uh, green note, which I guess is sage or oak wood in this case. Um, very much vanilla sage. Uh, I'll have to compare the two side by side. This one maybe smells a little bit sweeter and less of that weird, like, there's, like, almost, like, a pineapple note in vanilla sage that's kind of strange. Um, but at least 80 to 90% the same. It's, like, a frosted, uh frosted vanilla mixed with like a slight herbal note in this case it says lavender but then in vanilla sage it's sage uh similar to like the herbal vanilla quality you can ice vanilla woods as well so if you like that i think you'll enjoy this one as well and if you like vanilla sage i think you'll enjoy this one as well very similar fragrances a total one and down for me i i, I didn't mind vanilla sage but i really don't need another one but once again made the trip there so i'll pick this one up so that's that right there uh, and lastly, of the ones that I hauled, uh, Smoked Vanilla Whiskey, and that's what that looks like right here. Uh, and this one is Dark Oak Bourbon Reserve and Smoked Vanilla, and that's what that looks like. This one, um, obviously based on the, the uh, name in the notes, I was like, is this just going to be Smoked Vanilla? Which we know Smoked Vanilla at this point came out in like a faceted collection. It was in like a ribbed green jar at one point. Uh, it's like an online exclusive along with like Winter White Woods these days. And in store, I thought there was something a little bit more rustic. Um, and whiskey about this, but the more and more I smell it, the more and more I think it's just like straight up smoked vanilla. Not to be confused with the smoked vanilla wallflower that's out, which is just marshmallow fireside repackaged for the spring and summer season. That is marshmallow fireside, the smoked vanilla that's out as a wallflower in a tester candle. The OG smoked vanilla is like this meaty barbecue vanilla fragrance that I still really enjoy so much. It's like a leathery. A slightly boozy, meaty, smoked vanilla note to that original one that I love so much. It's very much up there with like Winter White Woods and Yuletide where you get that like nice velvety, a uh, smoky vanilla with a very like uh, slightly rustic, I guess in this case, bourbon or whiskey type of note. Um, yeah, similar, similar to smoked vanilla. I thought there was a little bit more difference when I smelled it in the store, but the more and more I smelled, the more I think it's just smoked vanilla. I have to do a comparison of the side by side, but that same like barbecue meatiness, if you know what I'm referencing, very much exists in this candle. So that's smoked vanilla whiskey right there. So, and eh. uh, so most of these are repackages, except pepper plum is not a direct repackage, but like a. A tweak of it. So I think that really leaves dark velvet oud being the only like actual new fragrance. But um, I thought I smelled dark velvet oud somewhere else before, but it might be like a dupe of a uh, like rose oud fragrance from a luxury candle is maybe where I'm picking that up from and not an actual BBW repackage. So yeah, so that was the collection right there. There is a fifth one called Warm Ocean Breeze. We all know that, been there, done that. Don't need to talk about it. It's just like a sort of like clean uh, cologne fragrance. And that rounds out that peppered plum collection. So happy to get that out of my system, but of course, it was like, you know, repackages uh, all up in there as well. Uh, and then now shifting gears into the white uh, barn like core collection of candles. Uh, this collection right here, in abundance everywhere, just tons and tons of it. They can't seem to get rid of it. Uh, this is Crisp Linen Breeze, which is Cotton Blossoms, Dewy Peony Petals, and Sweet Vanilla Musk. Uh, super excited for this one. But when you go to smell it, um, it's just kind of like a very generic laundry fragrance. Uh, there's a very similar like sea salt linen 
fragrance to the sea salt linen fragrance of sea salt and linen. Uh, there's two versions of sea salt and linen, the watered down online exclusive version as well as the original one in that like awesome like rat in uh, like basket weave type of uh, wraparound label. Um, the original one's far superior. This one kind of smells like that watered down second version, but not exactly as well. Just your usual boring generic like linen fragrance with a slight like saltiness in there. I was hoping for maybe a little bit more of a peony vanilla presence because like a peony vanilla candle smells amazing, but it's just kind of like buried in there and it just smells like your usual like uh, the sea salt and linen. The second watered down version is the closest thing I can compare it to. I don't think it's exactly that, but just a generic, nothing so much to talk about uh, linen fragrance. So it's just kind of neither here nor there. So that was crisp linen breeze right there. Uh, we then have geranium fields, which once again, I'm in the middle of a move, so I can't get my comparison candles, but I suspect this might be a repackage or a very close fragrance of a previous fragrance. And so we have that right here, and that's what that looks like. This one is geranium buds, dried vetiver, and smooth cedar wood. Um, and the bottom says flourishing geranium buds, dried vetiver, and smooth cedar wood. Uh, has the core wicks, and that's what that looks like right there. Um... Very much your quintessential straight up grassy green vetiver heavy geranium fragrance. If you've ever smelled a geranium plant and rubbed your like uh, fingers on either the buds or the leaves, there's a very strong like metallic note to geranium that's just so uh, like unmistakably geranium. Uh, it has very much like an old battery slash metallic vibe to it. This captures that to the tea mixed with a very grassy green like vetiver note in there. Think of the grassy greenness of like fresh bamboo. There's really no sweetness in here. It's floral but not in like a juicy sweet like rose peony jasmine floral but more just like a greenery floral type of fragrance uh just straight up like geranium all the way um it smells very much like the blue geranium test lab candle that we had from the test lab collection with like sriracha uh and all that kind of stuff in there uh very similar to that which i really didn't care for it and it was very light i think it might be a repackage of that but once again it's packed away so i can't uh compare it side by side but just like a like a very green woodsy uh metallic geranium fragrance just straight up and that's what that uh is right there uh, the next one we have is Coconut Clementine, which I was really excited for, but after having burned it, not so much. And that's what that looks like right there. I have the thick rope like wicks that kind of like struggle to pull out, but uh, it is fresh coconut water, ripe orange blossoms, and zesty lemon. I was hoping for something like sunny coconut, which is coconut leaves mixed with a juicy, awesome orange juice note. This is not at all that. It's more of like a abstract, uh, like a unisex type of like... Uh, like a, not cologne, but you know, like a woodsy, more men's type of fragrance rather than something like straight up sweet and juicy like Sunny Coconut was. I don't know, it's like this husky, like dried, like outer coconut fragrance mixed with a little bit of the meat in there, but it's not overly sweet. Uh, it's not like toasted. It's not like your sweet coconut that you would find in like their uh, like coconut bakery fragrances. Not at all like that. Uh, mixed with like a orange citrus lemon fragrance that kind of smells like licorice or what is it anise it's very much like that there's a very heavy like licorice smell mixed with a coconut husk no that i'm just really not a fan of it's just really strange it just smells like licorice and coconut and like plastic mixed together like uh we had this burning in the hotel room and we we're just like oh like we're just really not feeling this one um, yeah, I only picked it up because it was part of the collection. I was hoping for something a little bit nicer. It's definitely a little bit more abstract and out there and not a direct interpretation of coconut and clementine as you would think in like a gourmand or sweetsy cutesy way. So I appreciate that these are different and out there, but a lot of times when BBW does, does like different and out there fragrances, they're just not very appealing. And this is kind of the case with this one that it very much one and done. Ugh, yikes. Uh, so coconut and clementine are right there. The next one, which is the star of the show, that I got two of these right off the bat because uh, I loved it so much, and that was Driftwood Waves right there. That's what that looks like. Uh, this one is crisp sandalwood, salted bergamot, and ocean air. And depending, based on the notes and the name, you would think this would be like some like just boring ass cologne fragrance or something like salted ocean air, which my, by the way, I love salted ocean air, but like you would, it might be like a repackage uh, or like a boring cologne, like ocean driftwood type of fragrance. Not at all. This is like the runaway, like amazing one that I love so much. Uh, like me and the friend like both like fell in love with this one immediately simply excellent uh, It's like this beautiful powdery almost like a creamy vanilla think of like the salted vanilla candle if anyone remembers that amazing a very similar fragrance category to that uh, Where it's like a spa like 
crisp, cool vanilla. I think Vanilla Waves would be the perfect name for this fragrance rather than Driftwood Waves. Driftwood Waves makes it seem a little bit more masculine and cologne whereas Vanilla Waves is a little bit more approachable and mass appeal, which is what this is. Uh, there's like that, almost like a linen type of salted vanilla, creamy, cool, but still fresh, clean, salty element of that vanilla is mixed in there, mixed with a slight like herbal uh, crispness uh, that also evokes like a linen type quality, but there's still so much of that salted vanilla aspect in here that I love so much. Uh, it has a powdery floralness mixed with like a slightly salty, crisp, like herbal quality to it that I really enjoy. So I think Vanilla Waves would be great for this uh, fragrance. Um, and it kind of emphasizes that powdery, beautiful, like uh, more appealing spa-like salted vanilla fragrance rather than whatever like an abstract drift would know is. Kind of marketed weird, but this is the one that I got two of right off the bat. It wasn't super strong uh, when I had it burning, but uh, it still smelled great. So that was Driftwood Waves right there. I believe there are two more in that collection called Eucalyptus Springs, which has been out many times before, been there, done that, don't need to talk about it. Uh, and Blue Bungalow, which is actually a little bit rare, hasn't been out as much as some of the other fragrances. Uh, but I didn't really care for Blue Bungalow the first time around either. It's like this sweeter, uh, borderline cologne, but not really cologne type of like grapefruit, uh, clean and refreshing, uh, slightly woodsy masculine fragrance. Uh, not terrible, but like when there's so many other candles that I had to buy, it wasn't a high priority that I didn't get Blue Bungalow. So that was the other one that I left on the shelf. And that was that entire collection. So uh, Driftwood Waves is a standout and the other ones are just kind of take it or leave it. I can see why they're not like doing super well. And the packaging is very smart and stylish and pretty and I enjoy it, but it just doesn't really like capture anyone's attention in terms of like a pizzazz or wow factor. So that was that collection right there. Uh, lastly, the other collection they are testing or only went to test stores was a Citronella collection and that's the Citronella and Flower Petals right there and that's what that looks like. This one is Blooming Geranium Buds, Lemongrass Root, and Citronella. Um, and Citronella is usually something used to repel mosquitoes when mosquito season comes around. Mosquitoes love uh, biting my skin. Um, and so we have Citronella right here. This is very heavily Citronella. I really don't care for the smell of Citronella. Citronella has like a heavy like lemongrass vibe to it, like a very like sort of earthy grassy lemon fragrance is really what citronella smells like. I really don't care for that. Um, and you get that lemongrass and citronella in here a whole lot. There's a almost like a sweet, like almost like a fruit loopsy type of lemon floral quality chilling in the background as well that is similar to the spring has sprung uh, Easter candle, but not the same similar, but it's like kind of like the spring has sprung and mixed it with a heavy citronella. That's kind of what this is. Uh, I didn't really need this one. It just kind of got talked into it. And then there's the other one, which is Citronella and Vetiver, uh, which is more, I think it was the far superior fragrance. Uh, and that one was more of like a Iris Spring shaving cream type of men's Vetiver uh, fragrance mixed with the same Citronella component. And that's what the other one was. It was like a great packaging. The friend got that one and I picked up this one because it was like the floral one. So uh, that was that for the Citronella collection. Nothing really to write home about on that. And I think that is it for the uh, test store haul. Um, these are kind of irrelevant at this point. You guys really can't get them. So like, I, I wouldn't mind doing reviews on them, but I don't know if anyone really cares about it at this point. So I don't know. I'll see whether or not I do individual reviews or if I do a comprehensive post burn on it. But I mean, these thoughts are pretty uh, exhaustive or comprehensive as they are in this haul video. So hopefully it was uh, somewhat entertaining or informative to you. Uh, thanks so much if you watched this video. Let me know if you're interested in these candles uh, and all that stuff in the comments down below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.